Hey everybody, welcome to the video. So we're breaking down the Monday Night Football Showdown slate for tonight on DraftKings. So the Philadelphia Eagles going against the Seattle Seahawks, and what should be a should be a decent game. We have some fun players to watch, including Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Chris Carson is going to be returning. We have the interesting situation going on with the quarterback position for the Philadelphia Eagles. So. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm sure you guys are as well. And if you find this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, and I really do appreciate it. We're also closing in on 7,000 subscribers, which is absolutely awesome. So I do appreciate all of you guys that are supporting the channel. And while you're at it, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss out whenever I post new content. And I think that's pretty much it. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. And as always, we'll start with the quarterback position. And I just want to talk about Russell Wilson first because we at least know what's going to go on with the quarterback situation for the Seattle Seahawks. As for the Philadelphia Eagles, who knows what's really going to happen there. It's going to be some kind of split. We know Jalen Hurts has been getting first-team reps all week in practice. So that's going to be a really interesting situation. But the Seahawks make it easier for us because we know for certain that Russell Wilson is not going to be splitting snaps with the backup quarterback here. So we'll talk about him first. He comes at a massive price tag of $12,600. Now, if you're looking at the numbers on paper, it's going to tell you that the Eagles have been a bit stingy versus quarterbacks this season. Like, if we look at their overall numbers, the 10th fewest points per game and only 230 passing yards and less than one and a half passing touchdowns per game, which I know that doesn't look great for Russell Wilson, but there's a couple of factors here. One, they play the NFC East, so they've played guys like Dwayne Haskins, Daniel Jones, the backup quarterback for the Cowboys, whoever it was in that game. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but I can tell you right now, it was not good. He was not good. And they, they faced Baker Mayfield, so they've had some pretty poor quarterbacks they've had to go up against, so it's going to skew the numbers a little bit. And overall, I'm not that scared of their pass defense. They are ranked 21st year versus the pass, which is bottom half in the league. So I'm really not concerned there. And Russell Wilson's one of the best quarterbacks in football. He's kind of fell off a little bit from his super hot start to the season. That's not to say he's been bad. He just hasn't been absolutely as amazing. But he's still averaging 300 passing yards per game, three passing touchdowns per game, throwing the ball close to 40 times per game. And he gives you that rushing upside as well as he's averaging close to 40 rushing yards per game, which is kind of like a built-in passing touchdown because... 36 rushing yards is 3.6 points, which is close to the four points you get for every passing touchdown. So Russell Wilson, he's a bit expensive, but there's plenty of value on this slate to make it work, and he's definitely an elite option if you want to play him in the captain spot. I would have no issues with that. Personally, I feel like I'd rather play one of his pass catchers in the captain spot, like DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett, and then throw in Russell Wilson in the flex spot just to open up your lineup maybe a little bit more. But you really shouldn't have too many issues for uh, using Russell Wilson in the captain spot, but it definitely isn't going to be the easiest thing in the world, so you might have to take a pure pump play. That's uh, so why I'm kind of leaning on going towards a guy like maybe Chris Carson, Tyler Lockett, or even DK Metcalf, who he's also really expensive as well, so it's not going to be super easy to fit him in. But Russell Wilson, he's obviously an elite option, and I, he's one of the top priorities on the slate. I'd have a hard time making laps without Russell Wilson in this one because he's just such a huge part of that offense. All right, so Russell Wilson was the easy guy to talk about. Now we'll move on to the Eagles quarterback situation where we're going to have two guys involved, which makes both these guys a bit shaky to play for DFS, especially in cash games and tournaments. Yeah, you're going to definitely want to take some stabs at the quarterbacks because quarterbacks tend to score a lot of points in fantasy because they have the ball in their hands each and every single play. So there's definitely value to be had here, and it's an amazing matchup versus Seattle. So I definitely want exposure to these guys, but in cash games, if you want to try to steer away from that just because you feel a little bit iffy, I totally understand that. Now, Wentz is going to start this game, but Jalen Hurts is going to be involved, and usually when Jalen Hurts plays, Carson Wentz is still in the field, but that's not going to be the case this time. Hurts is expected to get around two to three snaps at a time. He's not expected to see a whole series. That's the reports as of right now. That could obviously change during the game if Wentz just happens to absolutely suck like he's had all season long for the most part. I know he showed spurts, but really he's not been that good, and that's why we're in the situation as of right now. So if Hurts comes out and those two to three plays at a time, he tends to be really good or maybe he just breaks off a long play and scores, I'd have a hard time seeing them taking taking him out of the lineup right away, and he could just end up playing the rest of the game if Carson Wentz is struggling. So there's definitely some situations here, and if you happen to believe that Hurts is going to come out and dominate in those few snaps that he gets and plays the rest of the game, at $7,200, he'd be obviously a really good option, and he has rushing upside as well. And so does Carson Wentz. He's been scoring some rushing touchdowns this season, but they're both interesting. Carson Wentz is obviously the safer play, but they just come at a $3,000 more expensive price tag, but... 
I mean, more than likely, we're going to see Carson Wentz play more snaps. But there is a scenario where if he's just super bad in this game, Jalen Hurts could take over at $7,200. It's a fantastic matchup versus Seattle. They've been one of the worst teams in the league versus quarterbacks. They used to be 32nd. They are not that anymore. They are now 31st, but they're still allowing close to 30 DraftKings points per game. They're 2060 versus the pass, and they're allowing an insane 355 passing yards per game. So one of these guys is probably going to pay off or if it's a complete split the entire game they both not they both might not pay off so it's definitely a interesting situation here and one I'm not super excited to dive into for fantasy purposes but from an NFL fan standpoint it should be fun to watch both of these guys play and it's a great matchup versus Seattle although if Jalen Hurts happens to play I would say it's going to hurt the pass catchers or I know he's going to play but if he happens to play a large chunk of this game it's probably going to hurt the pass catching options for the Eagles just because they're used to Carson Wentz and I feel like I just feel a little bit more comfortable with Carson Wentz under center even though he's been super bad this season so eh, weird situation there but I think Wentz is the safer play Hurts is he's a tournament play for sure and there's definitely upside there at $7,200. All right, moving on to the running back position, I feel like this is a little bit easier to figure out because we have the two main running backs because Chris Carson is going to be back this week. So it's Miles Sanders and it's Chris Carson. Yes, Boston Scott, Carlos Hyde, DJ Dallas, maybe even a Corey Clement, they'll get mixed in. But for the most part, Miles Sanders and Chris Carson should dominate the touches and they're both pretty good running backs and they're both both involved in the passing game as well. So I do think there's some pretty solid plays here. Now we'll start with Miles Sanders just because he's the more expensive player at $9,200. Now the Eagles, they do have the lower implied team total and the quarterback situation I guess makes this offense a little bit shaky, but he should see upwards to 20 touches in this game. Now the Seahawks DBA wise, they're only their ninth DBA versus the run, which is pretty stingy, but they're still allowing 25.8 DraftKings points per game to the position, which is 21st in the league. Now, they're only allowing 67 rushing yards per game, which is actually pretty darn good, but the thing they've really been struggling at this season is through the air. They're allowing close to seven catches per game and close to 50 receiving yards per game, which actually works really well for a guy like Miles Sanders because he's always involved in the passing game. He has a 13.7% target share in the season, five targets per game, so that always gives him a nice floor, and he could certainly do some damage against this defense and has struggled versus pass-catching running backs this season. I wouldn't say it's my most favorite matchup in the world, but there's definitely a soft spot in that defense for Miles Sanders to take advantage of. Then we'll go down to Chris Carson at $8,800, the other RB1 on this slate. I would say he's a little bit more interesting to me just because I feel a little bit more comfortable with the Seahawks being able to get any getting into scoring position for him, so I think he's more likely to score a touchdown here, and he's going to be involved in the passing game as well. If you're looking at his numbers on the season when he's been on the field, not too far off Miles Sanders at a 12% target share, about 1-2% to 2 difference, uh, different target share numbers right there, uh, just a little bit less than a target per game than Miles Sanders at 4.17 targets per game, and actually more receiving yards per game as well, but he should see about 15-20 to 20 touches here, which is fine with me. Now, the Ingles have... The Ingles... The Joe Ingles, I don't know why he was on my mind, <laughs> if you guys watch basketball. But the Eagles defense, the run defense, I should say, has been a bit stingy versus the run. Their 13th DB versus that, and they're allowing 21 DraftKings points per game, which is the 8th fewest in the league. But more rushing yards per game than the Seahawks, and they've been a little bit more stingy versus the pass. But overall, Chris Carson, I like his chances of getting into the end zone, whether it's on the ground or through the air. Now, Carlos Hyde's going to be in the mix, and I guess DJ Dallas will be there as well. But for the most part, Chris Carson should dominate the touches. Although, I could see him seeding some touches to a guy like Carlos Hyde, because it is his first game back. Now, they've been waiting a while, so I assume he is like 100% fully good to go here. So, I'm not really too concerned there. But I guess Carlos Hyde is maybe just a little bit of a threat, but overall, I have some I have some pretty good confidence in Chris Carson and this one to have a solid game. And outside of those guys, they're just the backup running backs. So Carlos Hyde, I mean, he's going to see touches, but at $7,000, do you really want to play Carlos Hyde at $7,000? He is priced like Chris Carson. It's not going to play. I think DraftKings just did that as insurance in case Chris Carson happened to be out. A Boston Scott at $1,000. He's cheap enough where I do think he's interesting. He's obviously not going to out-touch Miles Sanders, but there is the off chance he can get a touchdown. He should see a handful of touches here, which at $1,000, it's not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. DJ Dallas, he might get a target or two, but I don't really have much confidence there, but he is cheap, but I don't really see the need to want to go with DJ Dallas. I'd rather take a cheap pass catching option to pair with one of my quarterbacks. And then outside of that, you're looking at maybe Clement to get a touch and maybe score like he did uh, like he did recently, although it's not something you can bank on. So it's really just Carson or Sanders here where maybe you can sprinkle in a cheap running back, but I'm not too confident in any of them, to be honest. 
All right, moving on to the wide receiver position, and it is a fun one because we have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And if you're using Russell Wilson, which you probably are, I assume you're going to want to pair him up with one of his pass catching options because this is a very concentrated offense. Russell Wilson is throwing the ball to either Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf, it seems like almost every single play. When he's not, there's maybe a random David Moore target. We're going to see a few Chris Carson targets and maybe a few to Will Disley and Jacob Hollister with Greg Olson being out. But for the most part, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, that is where the ball is going. And at least one of these guys usually goes off each and every single week. We've seen scenarios where both these guys go off, and I can certainly see that happening versus Philadelphia. But for the most part, at least one of these guys should have a pretty solid game. Now, Metcalf, he's had a couple of bust games this season, and Tyler Lockett's had his fair share of bust games. But if one does bad, usually the other one does good. But there's also scenarios where both can do good. So I definitely want exposure to these guys. And if you can fit both in your lineup, I would be absolutely ecstatic about that. But the price tag on DK Metcalf is a little bit tough. He's around $12,000, but he's definitely been one of the most fo uh, fun football players to watch in all football this season. And he's one of the most electric players, and he's absolutely dominant. I think that, I think I read a stat th earlier this week that he leads the league in leads the league in contested catches, and the guy's just been absolutely phenomenal. He's blazing fast. He's a monster of a human. It's pretty hard to guard him. He's averaging close to 90 yards per game, a 22% target share, and close to a touchdown per game. And he also has a 36% market share of the team's air yards as well. Now, personally, if I had to pick one, I would say DK Metcalf probably scores more points, but I feel like Tyler Lockett can at least match him and he's about $2,000 cheaper, so if I had to pick one, I'd like to get both, but if I had to pick one, I'm going to side with Tyler Lockett just because he does have a higher target share in the season. Now, I know he's been known to bust in games this year, but he's had his fair share of good games as well, and he's had, he had like a Tyree Kill-like game. I forget what week it was exactly, but it was against Arizona, that Sunday night game where he had 200 yards, three touchdowns. Had, what, 56, 55 fantasy points. It wasn't quite Tyree Kill, but it was pretty darn close to it. He had 20 targets in that game, I think 15 catches. Not saying that's going to be the case this time around. But he always seems to have the softer coverage between him and DK Metcalf because DK Metcalf, the monster of the human he is, he's going to draw a lot of coverage and attention on the defense. So it always gives Tyler Lockett at least a little bit softer cushion to work with. He's also going to be in the slot a good portion of the time as well, where he sees some good matchups for the most part. And he's actually averaging more fantasy points per, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, more fantasy points per route ran this season than DK Metcalf. It's only by a .1 difference. He's also seeing more targets per route ran as well. He's not, I don't think he has the, I was going to say I don't think he has quite the upsides DK Metcalf, but that would not be the right thing to say just because <laughs> he's actually had, uh, much higher ceiling games than DK Metcalf has had this season, but he just hasn't been as consistently as good. I think DK Metcalf's had two down games this season, where Tyler Lockett's definitely had, I believe, over four, but both are great options here. Personally, though, I like Tyler Lockett just a little bit more because he's cheaper, but you can't go wrong with either. Both have a 31% wide receiver versus cornerback matchup advantage this week per PFF, and the Eagles are 21st year versus the pass, but they're allowing the 12th fewest points for getting to the wide receiver position, but you got to keep in mind, Look at the teams they face this season. I think that paints a better picture as of why they're a little bit stingy versus quarterbacks and wide receivers. Then moving on to some of the Eagles pass catching options. To be honest, it's kind of tough to pick these guys because we don't know really who's going to be the quarterback. I mean, we know who's going to be the quarterback, but it's going to be a bit of a split. I'd feel more comfortable if Carson Wentz dominates the snap at quarterback this week just because they're familiar with him. and We've seen these guys have good games with Carson Wentz. Jalen Hurts, it's kind of a bit of a wild card there. But this is an elite matchup versus Seattle. They've been so bad versus wide receivers all season long. They're still dead last versus the position. Now, earlier in the year, I think at one point they were allowing close to 80 DraftKings points per game. Now they're down below 60, but it's still an insane amount of points. Nearly 60 DraftKings points per game to the position. Still over 250 passing, or not passing yards, over 250 receiving yards per game to the position. And they're 26 TV versus the pass. This is an excellent matchup for all these Eagles wide receivers. If I had to pick one, my favorite would be Jalen Rager at $5,800. He's been the guy running the most routes. He's been on the field the most. And he's only 5800 which I think is a pretty fair price point. So if you had to pick one, I like Rager. I, I mean, just because he's been on the field. And if we're looking at their snap counts last week, Jalen Rager and Travis Fogel were around 95% of the snaps. Alshon Jeffrey was below 10% of the snaps, so he's pretty hard to trust. I know he's cheap at $1,600, and he's a big body, so I guess we have touchdown upside there, but 
and you're playing less than 10% of the snaps, that is pretty hard to trust. And they said his snaps are going to increase, and that really just hasn't been the case. Greg Ward was around 70% of the snaps, and with Zach Ertz looking like he's going to be out once again, I think that still makes him a solid play. If Ertz was in, it's definitely going to hurt Greg Ward, but because he's more of the possession guy, but with him being out, I still think he's fine at $5,200. He should still see around 60-70% of the snaps, so it's a good price, and it's a really good matchup versus the Eagles, but Man, these guys, I mean, if Carson Wentz was playing, it would make things a little bit easier. I'm not saying Carson Wentz is a good quarterback. He's not been good at all. It's just they're more familiar with him. It's just going to be hard to get in a rhythm if they're going to keep switching quarterbacks. Because <laughs> I mean, if you have a different guy throwing the football every single play, I mean, it's kind of hard to get into a rhythm and build, I don't know, what's the right word? Synergy? Is that the right word? I don't know. It sounds fancy, so we'll go with it. But that's kind of the spiel on the wide receivers here from the Seahawks. Is obvi- Seahawks is obviously DK Metcalf and Lockett. The Eagles is kind of a smorgasbord of guys, but the main guys you'd want are Travis Fogel and Jalen Regular. Those are the guys that are playing 90-plus percent of these snaps. And if you want some secondary options on the Seattle Seahawks, David Moore is the wide receiver three there, but he is questionable for this game, and it sounds like he might not be good to go. So if he happens to be out, that's an upgrade for uh, Freddie Swain, but he's also questionable as well. He missed the last couple of days of practice due to a non-injury, whatever it was. So it sounds like he should be good to go. And if David Ward's out, Swain is $200. He is the bare minimum. Not saying he's going to come out and have an excellent game, but there was a couple of weeks ago where he was somewhat involved in this offense, and if he did something like that at $200, you can play whoever you want. You'd have no issue at all playing Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, throwing a Carson once in there if you want, or a Miles Sanders or a Chris Carson. It would really open up our lineups, but and if he's out, after that, it gets it gets a really uh, it gets really tough, but I'm hoping that's not going to be the situation. But I think that's all we really have to talk about for the wide receiver position. Swain is the lowest I am willing to go, and yeah, we can move on to the tight ends now. And up top, we have Dallas Goddard at $6,400, who is the best play at tight end on this slate. But the thing is, that does come with a price tag. And also, the splitting quarterback thing, that's obviously going to hurt all the pass-catching options for the Eagles. But Carson Wentz, when he is in, he does like getting the ball to the tight end position, which is obviously going to be Dallas Goddard with Zach Burt. Zach Burtz, Zach Ertz being out once again. So it's going to be the Goddard and the Richard Rodgers show. And last time in Week 11, Dallas Goddard played on 100% of the snaps. So you don't have to worry about him being on or off the field. He is going to be on the field for pretty much each and every single snap. The guy's a good tight end as well. But if we're looking at his numbers so far this season, around five targets per game, a 13.9% target share. We keep in mind there's a couple of Zach Ertz games mixed in there as well, which is going to skew the numbers. But overall, I do think he's a pretty solid safe play in my opinion. If you're looking at uh, the Seahawks numbers versus tight ends this season, they've actually been a bit stingy. The fourth fewest points per game, although they've just been getting so burnt on the outside I think he can kind of factor that in. I'm not really too concerned about Dallas Carter here. He should have a pretty solid game. They're still 26-D versus the pass and one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. So Goddard, I do think he's a fine option, but I do realize if you can't get up to him just because if you're allocating your funds to guys like Wilson, Metcalf, Lockett, maybe one of the running backs, I wouldn't say Dallas Carter is a top priority on this slate, but I do think he's a solid option. But where I'm more interested in is probably these cheaper tight ends because they do offer us some nice value with Greg Olson being out. If you're looking at Greg Olson's numbers this year, he's got around a 10% target share, a 21% weight opportunity share, and a little bit less than a 10% market share of the team's air yards and about 3.5 targets per game. I know, not great numbers, but he did... He usually plays the most snaps out of all the tight ends, so it's definitely going to open up some room for Will Disley and for Jacob Hollister, and they're only $1,400 and $3,600, and I feel like they're maybe just a bit too cheap here, so I definitely have interest in both. Will Disley did play in around 60% of the snaps last week, and Jacob Hollister was well below that, but I'd imagine it's going to be pretty close to a split here. Both both guys are going to be on the field, and I definitely think there is some upside here at their price points, and there's always a little bit of touchdown upside there as well. And Russell Wilson's probably going to throw for 300 plus yards here, so you definitely want exposure to his pass catching options. So I like both. If I had to pick one, I would say Will Disley, he's more than likely going to score more than Jacob Hollister, but I'm not sure if it's going to be more than. It's going to be too much more to where it's going to be. He's going to be a better point per option than Jacob Hollister, so I guess I would slightly side with Hollister. He's actually averaging more targets per game than Will Disley this season, if that's your kind of thing. And the Eagles have not been that good versus tight ends either, allowing, what, the fifth or sixth most points per game. They're ranked 20th in the league, allowing close to 15 points per game, over half a receiving touchdown per game, and over 50 receiving yards as well. So 
definitely have interest in both Jacob Hollister and Will Disley for value on this slate. And outside of those guys, I wouldn't really touch anyone else. Zach Ertz is not going to be playing. And then the rest of those guys, maybe one of them gets a random catch. But outside of that, I can't really project it <laughs> for the most part. And then after that, we get into the more boring positions, and tight ends are usually not that fun to talk about either, but we have defenses and kickers, which, eh, they're kind of gross, they're hard to project for the most part. If you had to pick one defense, I would have to say the Seahawks over the Eagles just because I plan on having, like, a full Seahawks onslaught in my lineup, so I'm not going to really want to play the defense against them. The Eagles defense is cheap, and I would say they're a little bit better than the Seattle Seahawks, but the Seahawks defense has been so awful this season and uh, it's just hard because it's going to be Jalen Hurts and Carson Wentz. So it's like, what do you do there? I feel like that could maybe throw the offense off balance a little bit. Or it could keep the Seahawks defense on their toes and they're just not ready for it. And it ends up working out really well. So I'm not really interested in either of these defenses just because they're both not that great. And, I mean, the Seahawks did the lower implied team total against them at 21. But they're on the road kind of like across the country for the most part. From Seattle to Philly, that's a long way to go. So, mm. Going west coast to east coast usually isn't the best thing in the world, but they're six and a half point favorites. But both these defenses really don't stand out too much to me. But the Eagles are really cheap if you need a salary relief option. But at that point, I would rather just try to get like a Will Disley or Jacob Hollister in there if you really had to go that cheap. And then the kickers, they are what they are. If they hit their field goals, they hit their field goals. Jason Myers and Jake Elliott. The Seahawks tend to score touchdowns, so they're not really kicking too many field goals. But he's definitely going to be in have scoring opportunities. It's just if they convert their touch, if they convert their drives into touchdowns or not. If they don't, Jason Myers should have a field day kick and field goals. So, But other than that, I mean, both are fine options. I could see the Eagles kicking way more field goals than the Seattle Seahawks if they can move. Because the Seattle Seahawks defense is not good, and they're playing at home. So I could see a scenario where they move the ball. They're just not getting into the end zone. So that could lead to plenty of field goal opportunities. So I could see Jake Elliott actually being a pretty solid play there. But again, you can't really project kickers for the most part. And it is what it is. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. That's going to be it for it. Kind of cut it off really quick there. But that's going to be the end. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure you leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I really do appreciate it. If you want to follow me over on social media, handles in the bottom of the corner of the screen. I would say it, but I'm sure you guys can read that just fine. Uh, if you want to support the content, my content, over on Patreon. Links down below for that. But it's November 30th. I don't think there's a November 31st, so you might as well wait until the next day on the 1st because you don't want to get charged double in two days. I don't think there's a November 31st. I think it's one of those months that end in 30. I'm not sure. I should probably know this by now, but I do not. But yeah, I think that's pretty much going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe we'll have a Tuesday showdown video if that game happens to be a go. I'm pretty sure everyone in that game is out, so that's going to be a really interesting showdown slate to break down. So... Maybe it just hopefully it gets canceled so we don't have to talk about it. But if it's not canceled, I'll have a video for you guys as ugly as that slate is. And yeah, before I keep rambling, I'm going to get out of here. I'll show you. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to get out of here, guys. <laughs>